So welcome to the Narrative Research Forum, hosted jointly by New MR and Irrational Agency. We think it's going to be a really good session for you here today. And if you want to be turning on your camera, Lee, and just say hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Ray. Uh, lovely to meet you all. Thanks for watching. And it's great to have you here. So this is called the Narrative Research Forum. Where's narrative research come from? And is it drawing mm. on academic research or something else? Yeah, so there's, I suppose there's two answers to that. From uh, from the point of view of the practitioners like us and, the, and people in academia, it has emerged from behavioral science research. It's kind of a, a subclass of that. We, uh, uh, for example, you have Robert Schiller, uh, the Nobel Prize winning economist who uh, has worked in behavioral economics as well as other areas. And he published a book called Narrative Economics uh, a few years back. Uh, that was one of the, the sources there's been um, uh, an academic tradition of narrative research, particularly in the qualitative research world, um, for a number of years. And uh, it's starting to get, there's starting to be more and more tools for quantifying narratives. And for example, the Bank of England has been using some of those to look at the, the stories that business people tell around the country about the, the state of the economy. But there's a, probably a deeper answer as to where it's come from, which is it's come from the very foundations of the human brain and narratives are a very powerful um, evolutionary tool that humans uh, got lucky enough I guess to to develop 50 maybe odd thousands years ago and the ability to tell stories was a very powerful way for us to learn faster than the trial and error approach that earlier species had had to learn so the importance of narratives to our survival has led to them being deeply encoded in the way the brain works. And so I think it's it's very natural that the more we understand about the brain and the more we see about how narratives unfold inside the brain, the more that we develop research tools to uh, be able to work with those and extract them and, and get uh, business value out of them. And it reminds me of, um, I was listening one time and people talk about how the way we understand almost anything new is by analogy. So when you're trying to explain the film Aliens, you'd say, well, it's like Jaws, but in space. And I guess that's yeah. that's narrative, isn't it? That's how we move learning from one to another. Yeah, yeah. Narrative has a few elements to it. One of them is definitely analogy and comparison, the ability to borrow one concept and translate it into a new environment. Another important element is the... Um, the causal structure of narrative. So narratives typically uh, they have an arc. They have you know a story has a beginning, a middle, and end. Usually, uh, you you can you can read a lot of uh, books about the science of stories and how stories typically start with an old world that is static. Some person, some protagonist intervenes. Uh, they have a problem or a challenge. They seek out tools or help to assist with that challenge and they ultimately they they face battles but usually they resolve the challenge and change the world for a better place and that specific arc from old to new is a causal arc so it's a it's an arc that relies on a causes b causes c and that causality in a way you can think of our brains as little scientists we're always looking for the causality in the world what is it that i could do to make something happen, to you know, get more food or to earn more money or to become more uh, admired. And what are the levers I could pull? And stories are a way for us human beings to explore those levers. Um, and analogy is a great um, component of that because we might learn from one uh, experience but translate into a new space where it, that insight hasn't yet been exploited. And while we're talking about quests, what's brought you to, to bring together this narrative research forum today? So I, the, the the narrative research world, I, I've been always really interested in. I've, uh, you, as you might know, I do some of my work in the academic space, writing papers for uh, economics journals and so on. And I've been contributing to um, a, a collection of papers around narrative research over the last couple of years. And about really a, a few years ago, we, um, started to look at and, and, and identify 
things in the, the human brain that weren't really covered entirely by traditional behavioral research, you know, the system one, system two distinction. So we um, look at something called system three, which is where we think the uh, the imagination plays out within the brain. And that's really all about stories. So the more that we um, have done that kind of research, the more we realized story is a really powerful concept to link that all together. It's really uh, it's really clear to stakeholders. Stakeholders can understand the idea of story-based research. It's something that respondents res uh, respond really well to because they, they love telling stories and they love hearing stories even from, from researchers. And so the more that we realized that uh, stories were going to be a powerful research tool, we wanted to go out and see who else in the world is doing this? So, uh, and and you're going to see some of them uh, in a few minutes' time. So, both client side, um, brand side, as well as other agencies who are uh, really getting into this kind of research and are pushing the boundaries, both qual and quant. And I think we we want to we want this to be the first of um, a uh, a long series of of narrative events. So, uh, hopefully, uh, with this success, we'll be able to come back and do this again uh, next year. And uh, we'd like to build this into uh, a kind of movement of all of the, the people and companies in the industry who are doing narrative research so that the best of it can uh, can come out and people who are who are interested can get to learn uh, from the best and, and we can all learn from each other through this forum. And what kind of research questions is it particularly good at answering and, and what does it deliver to stakeholders? Mm. You touched on it um, a couple of minutes ago. You said we understand something new through analogy. So narrative research is very powerful for new areas. So you'll hear, uh, for example, from Montelis about uh, a new area that they were interested in exploring, a new category. And because there isn't the experience already, people don't have experience of products in that category because mostly they haven't engaged with it. So they use stories to... Uh, tell themselves how would my how would I interact with this category? Would I buy these products? Would I enjoy these products? So anything that's around new exploration like that, um, brands are often built through story. So if you want to understand brands, uh, you can of course you can get a brand score through a tracker, but you might want to know well what's going on under that score. Is it, if it's gone up or down, what drives that? What has changed? about the story this brand is telling to the world. Um, and uh, another area that can be very powerful is sensitive topics. So uh, we've used this a little bit for, uh, and I think Christian might talk about this, um, for areas like uh, medical challenges that people have or personal problems that they um, might not open up immediately about when you ask them questions in a questionnaire, but when you allow them to tell their story, and you give them the safe space, and maybe you share your own story to help them to be open and to um, to to feel trusted. Then um, they it, it becomes easier for them to talk about that. So it it provides insights across all of those kind of areas. It's uh, some of those are traditionally where, where where you would use qualitative research to explore. But the great thing about uh, the science of narratives is that understanding those structures, understanding that causality and the associations, we can also quantify narratives so we can get insight that is uh, robust and statistically reliable and scalable to uh, to give clients really um, solid outputs they can base an investment on. And how does this differ from traditional qual and traditional sort of quant things where story finding and storytelling have often been mm. seen as part of that process? Yeah, so I and, and I've seen some of your work on on story finding. I think that's really uh, important. And the way I would characterize it is, story finding is about taking the data that you have and working out the story that you, as a researcher, want to tell from this data. Narrative research is the, is the other end is getting the consumer stories as an input to the data. So. Um, you there, you know, there's a story that you tell to a stakeholder, but there's a story that 10,000 consumers or 10 million consumers might be ready to tell to you. And narrative research allows you to listen to their stories uh, and bring that in. Now, yes, that um, sometimes in traditional qual, there is a, uh, a story element. You ask people, tell me about the last time this happened or tell me about your life. So that uh, in the qual world, it's 
probably quite a natural evolution to go from that to a more structured approach to thinking about the steps in the story and how to analyze those. In the quant world, I think it's quite new to be able to extract narrative structures and causality uh, in this way. And that's that's uh, where some of the biggest uh, leaps forward, I think, are, are coming. Fantastic. And, and probably just a final point, who do you think the, the key players are in this in the, at the moment? So I think the, um, you know, some of the people here uh, that you're going to hear from uh, are, are among them. There are academics who are working in this uh, in this space. And um, the so I mentioned the Bank of England. There are uh, researchers at UCL, researchers at the University of Chicago who are, are working in this space. I think it's something that... Um, maybe has not yet been taken up by the bigger agencies in the industry. That's the nature of, of new methodologies, I think, is they tend to start in the with the specialists. But uh, I really, I hope that uh, we'll start to see this being adopted as a, a really poor form of research. Maybe in 10 years, we'll be saying, not just, is this a qual or a quant project, but is this a qual or a quant or a narrative project? Because it kind of often sits in that hybrid space in between the two. Excellent. And we, we have one quick question before we move on to the first presentation. Um, what is the difference between narrative research and ethnographic research? And if there is a difference, what are the advantages? So, uh, well, I would say ethnographic research is more of an observation. So you're observing the events, the real events that unfold in someone's life. Uh, narratives can cover real events, but they can also cover imagination. So uh, think about the um, the future me who's going to be, I don't know, driving, uh, flying an electric helicopter in 20 years, like whatever that, you know, the next technological development or the, the future me who's going to be even, uh, you know, retiring in 30 years. I can tell you a story about that future me but you can't observe that ethnographically because it's not happening. So um, you're quite right. There are overlaps and where you're rehearsing and relating stories from the past, then ethnography could be one way of accessing those. Uh, but narrative, I think, goes broader, both further into the past, into the past that you can't catch ethnographically because it's, too, it's already past, and into the future uh, and into the potential futures that we might be living into. Fantastic. Lee, thanks for that great introduction to narrative research for our audience. Thank you. Can't wait for the rest. New MR is supported by patrons and sponsors. Big shout out to them. Really big shout out to Irrational Agency. I hope you found it useful. I hope you have a, gr a great rest of day, no matter how long or short that day is still to come. And I look forward to seeing you at a future session. So bye for now.